animals have? That is mostly Liliana. I didn't. I just stood there and watched her catch it. But help me get my gloves because I was scared of it. Were you scared of it? Slightly. Slightly. Because it was doing it's all rattling and all hissing and yeah. striking at her. These fox snakes, they tame up so quickly. She's not even. She's just like whatever. Yep. You hold them for about 30 seconds or a minute, and they are your best. We put her in a cage. Friend. Yeah, because I was away doing a fire a class, room. and you. Oh, kept him until eyes. I got home. Yeah, his eyes. Let's see if we can get up close and see those eyes. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. You gonna let him go, Liliana? Bye, boy. I was hoping to meet you. Bye. Oh, he rattled his tail. You rattled his tail a little bit? Look at him. Right back to wild. Ooh. <laughs> There's his tail. Right? Yeah, that's the rattling tail. That's <laughs> funny. I should be able to rattle snake. Oh no, he's not a rattlesnake. Oh, nope. sure makes you think so though, huh? See how ferocious he looks? Oh, he bit you. No, he didn't. He tried to. It actually didn't hurt. Oh yeah, you can feel it rattle on you, huh? Oh, you want to feel it rattle? Whoa. I want to feel it rattle. Don't do it, it's not scary at all. <laughs> bite me, bite me! <laughs> <laughs> he bit you. <laughs> How did it feel? Didn't feel like anything. Didn't feel like anything? It felt like a snake shooting at you. Yeah. yeah. Really cool, Liliana. You're so good with animals. Hello, my friends. I'm going to publicly admit to having a love affair. Before you get angry with me, I want to tell you that Rebecca has also been having a love affair. And we're both having a love affair with the same thing. And that is the world. Today I would like to share with you how you too can have a love affair with this amazing world that we live in. We humans have developed a strong tendency shall we say, to look at the world with preferences. As we look about us, the world becomes divided into the good things and the bad things. For many of us, there's a lot more bad things than good things. It might just be looking around the world at the world news. It might be the flies that are buzzing around me right now, or the humid heat that's so uncomfortable. When we live filled with these preferences, our life feels tense, it feels closed in, and not overly pleasant. Nor are we able to usually make really powerful, meaningful change in our lives or the world because we're so busy fighting against the things that our mind finds repellent. But what happens if we fall in love with the world. <laughs> this is so life-changing because it takes that tendency for us to be always in a state of preference, of desire, of thinking I want this, I don't want that, to being open to life in general. It's easy, of course, to be in love with the beautiful things, the flowers, the sunshine, the sunsets, but quite another thing to be in love with the whole world that we experience around us, the pain as well as the pleasure, the flower, but also the dead dried stalk, maybe even the bird poop on a leaf. Does this sound crazy? It might because we've been taught these preferences. But this is the difference between being enchanted with the world or not. You might look again at that piece of poop on the leaf and you might see a horse's head. And that might take you into an imagining in your life. I might look around myself and find that I see wrinkles on the face of somebody that I love. And I can think, ah, that is age creeping up on them. Or I can think, in those wrinkles, 
there is written the story of their life. Even more, I can start to appreciate life just for its sensations, just for the richness of the experience. It might be a fly that decides to bite me, and I can brush that away, or I can experience the sensation. It might be something that makes me sad, and I can fight against that sadness and think, ah, oh, I should have a better attitude, or I can feel that sadness. Someone might walk into my worldview and say something unkind to me. I can take that, ah, oh, as something I fight against, or I can just hear the music of their voices and see the miracle of their being and just immerse myself in that experience. You'll notice in the one way, the world beats us down, it attacks us, it fights us. In the other way, we open ourselves and things that had power over us before they just don't anymore. So why is love so powerful? If you think of somebody that you've been in love with, notice how it shifts, perhaps something that could be viewed as an annoying habit into something that's endearing and enchanting to you. So it takes negatives and can turn them into literal positives. Then think about when you're in love with somebody how you can become very selfless. Love urges you into a place where we're not just thinking about me and how I can get this and this and this that I want, but instead, when we love someone, when we love something, we find more joy than we can ever get by acquiring things for ourselves in seeing the joy of others or seeing the life experience of others. It doesn't always have to be somebody smiling. It can be somebody crying and recognizing that as they cry, they're feeling and they're experiencing a richness of life. In nature, I can look at a disease that is killing some plants and I can think, oh, that is terrible. Or I can see that that death, that disease, that's part of life. It's part of why there's dark, rich soil out here, because leaves do die and they tumble to the ground and they become new soil. When I am in love with the world, my mind reframes everything in a really positive way. It spends less and less time in feelings of self-pity, of victimhood, of feeling like Ah, oh, my life sucks. And it spends more and more time in appreciating everything around us. There's someone who comments on this channel quite often, Sean Dell. And I will make a video about how you can, for instance, be more positive in your life or be more mindful. And he will invariably write and say, I enjoy being sometimes unmindful. I enjoy being happy and sad. Perhaps this is the deepest Zen we can find, being as in touch with the force as possible. When we see the beauty in sadness as well as happiness, in an ancient wrinkled face as well as a young child's face, in the decay of wood, and in the growth of what falling in love with the world isn't easy for me it's an ongoing journey and i have a long way to go because there are things that again are very easy to love but there are other things like mcdonald's which are a lot tougher for me to love because i can see them so easily in a very negative light and this is one of the ways to start to enable love in your life, to feel it blossom inside of you. To do this, we can begin with gratitude. When I look around, especially at something that I might view as negative, I sit down to some food and it's not the food I wanted. 
I can still be grateful for having something to eat. And I can still immerse myself in the textures and the flavors and have a very powerful, wonderful, immersive, enchanting experience. Even though my mind wanted something else. Another powerful exercise to develop more love in your life is to look around you and find something that doesn't seem very beautiful. Maybe it's this dead leaf. And I sink into this dead leaf. I look at it. I notice the veins in the impossibly complex, beautiful patterns that are interwoven through it. I look and I see that this dead leaf is becoming everything green around me. Next year, this, this is the nutrients that will go up through the roots and feed these beautiful green plants around me. Now suddenly I've taken something that just seems kind of blah or ugly and I've seen its beauty shining through. I've seen how it's related to the whole. Yet another way to enable love in your life is through the glow meditation. If you've been with us for a while, then you've probably heard of this. But if you haven't, I'll introduce it briefly. You take a moment any time in your day and you go through the glow. You go through gratitude. You just feel the gratitude. You imagine love and you just feel the love for some of the people or the things around you. You go into a feeling of oneness, whatever that means for you, your interconnection with everything. And you leave off with a sense of wonder. I wonder what this day will unfold in front of me. And you notice how this glow meditation, it fills us with gratitude for the things that we have. It immerses us in love. It helps us to feel connected to everything around us. In that wonder, that last part, wonder is the opposite of preferences. Wonder is open and curious, where preferences are locked down. Eventually, love can become a pervasive feeling that just fills us up and we walk around maybe with a stupid grin on all day <sighs> because we feel so full of love. And it becomes easier and easier to look at the people around us that might be difficult to love and to really love them. It becomes easier and easier to look at ourselves because we can be difficult to love and to love ourselves. And it becomes easier and easier to look at just the experience unfolding around me, whatever it is. I'm too hot. I'm too cold. I'm being bitten by a fly. I'm getting to eat a wonderful meal. I'm getting to have a warm bath, getting to swim in a river. Whatever that experience is, we can immerse ourselves in it. We can feel that, ah, that love that just fills us up. For Rebecca and I, this love affair is kind of what our whole life is about. We talk about a lot of things on this channel, about self-development, about forging your mind. But this love for us is the ultimate tool. It's the one that gives us strength when we otherwise would fall. It's the one that gives us resilience when otherwise we might break. My friends, share in the comments a little bit about your love of the world. Are there some things that you formerly found difficult to love, but you are beginning to be enchanted by? Are there things that you just can't love yet? I know I have my list. And think, because there will be a part of your mind, as there is a part of my mind, that says, I can't love this, because then I'm sanctioning it. But instead ask, really, what would happen if I love that thing? Because sometimes when we love something that otherwise would fill us with hate, 
we find that we can change it more effectively or that it changes by itself or seemingly by itself, perhaps with the influence of our love. And a moment just to say, I love you because here we are across from each other, talking with each other across a chasm of space and time, but yet here we are together. And there's a connection here that I hope we all can feel where we as a community are looking at the world around us and trying to love ourselves more, to love the world more, to really immerse ourselves in this experience of life so that we're no longer just fighting against it, but we're joyfully immersed in it. Thank you for being part of this community. And I cannot wait to hear what you have to say in the comments. Thank you.